Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we are running through five new signings that are struggling for game time this season. Let's get started. 5. Mohamed Kudus Whilst Edson Alvarez and James Ward-Price have successfully made themselves first-team regulars for David Moyes' West Ham, Konstantinos Mavropanos and Mohamed Kudus, signed from Stuttgart and Ajax respectively, have thus far struggled to win a spot in the Scotsman's starting eleven. In Mavropanos' case, this is unsurprising. Having only played 345 minutes of Premier League action prior to this season with Arsenal, and with a Gerd and Zuma to contend with, it was always going to be difficult for the Greek international to instantly earn a spot at the centre of the Hammers' defence. But in Kudus' case, having shone for Ajax last season, not only contributing 14 league goals but an additional 6 in 6 Champions League games, we saw the Ghanaian as more than capable of making an instant impact. So far, though, he's only been given 95 minutes of league action, 15th in West Ham's squad, with no more than 23 minutes of game time in any one Premier League game. Despite scoring an excellent 89th minute equaliser in their 2-2 draw with Newcastle prior to the international break, Moyes left it until the 67th minute to bring him on against Aston Villa, with West Ham already 2-1 down. With Mikel Antonio in the midst of a seven-game scoreless streak and Lucas Paqueta dropping a rare stinker against Aston Villa, failing to track Douglas Luiz for the opener and giving Edson Alvarez a hospital pass for the second, it'll be interesting to see whether Moyes shuffles his pack for games against Olympiacos and Everton this week. Failed to give Kudu significant minutes in those games, and the noise that he was a club-led signing will only grow. 4. Wataro Endo Whilst Klopp had seemingly made peace with losing Jordan Henderson this summer, alongside Naby Keita, James Milner and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, it's clear that in an ideal world Fabinho would still be at Anfield. Ultimately though, a £40 million offer from Saudi Arabian side Al Itahad for a player approaching 30, who had experienced a colossal dip in form in 22-23, proved too good to turn down, and Liverpool were left with a month to find a new defensive midfielder. When Reds targets Moses Caicedo and Romeo Lavia chose to join Chelsea within days of each other towards the end of August, Klopp pushed the panic button, and 30-year-old Wataro Endo was signed from Stuttgart. Now, Endo is far from a bad player. A Stuttgart regular who had missed just three Bundesliga games in three seasons in southwest Germany, he ranked 11th in the league last season for passes into the final third and 7th for progressive passes. But did anyone envisage the 54 cap Japanese international representing Liverpool in 2023? Absolutely not. And so far, he's been given little opportunity to change that initial perception. After starting in Liverpool's 2-1 comeback win against Newcastle in their second league game of the season, he's played just 22 minutes of their last six league games, with Alexis McAllister, who played the vast majority of his minutes as a number 10 last season, starting every game as a six. Whilst the Argentinian might not have been as eye-catching as fellow new boy Dominic Sabosley, with Thiago still to come back from injury, and Jones and Gravenberg also in contention, it's difficult to see Endo being offered any meaningful minutes outside of the Europa League. For a 30-year-old who was playing in Japan as recently as 2018, representing a club of the calibre of Liverpool in the Europa League might be enough, but it would be interesting to see World Cup winner McAllister playing further forward at some stage this campaign, and in order to do so, Endo needs to win his manager's favour. 3. Nathan Teller Fresh off the back of 17 goals and 5 assists in 39 league games on loan at Championship tabletop as Burnley, it was clear that Nathan Teller would be playing for a top division side in 23-24. That wasn't going to happen at his parent club Southampton after their relegation, leaving many to predict a return to Turf Moor. Vincent Company appeared determined to make that happen, with Burnley bidding £9 million for the winger in early August. However, the Saints value Teller at almost double that amount and they would find a club willing to pay it in none other than Bundesliga giant Spa Leverkusen. This represented an enormous opportunity for Teller. Not only would he finally get a crack at playing in a top league having only ever started 17 league games for Southampton, but he'd be playing under one of the best emerging managers in world football in Xabi Alonso for a Leverkusen side that were expected to challenge Bayern Munich this term. How has it gone so far? Well, Leverkusen are absolutely flying, going unbeaten through their first eight league games, winning seven of them, with their 22 points only topped by three sides in Europe's top five leagues, who have all played two more matches. Unfortunately for Teller, Alonso's other attacking signings, Victor Boniface and Jonas Hoffmann, have hit the ground running, and Florian Wirtz is always going to start when fit, meaning game time for the Stevenage-born youngster has been hard to come by. So far, he's been entrusted with just 40 league minutes, and his prospects of more don't seem particularly bright. Jonas Hoffmann, Leverkusen's first-choice right winger, might be 31, but after a few injury-hit years towards the back end of his 20s, his durability has drastically improved, with the former Gladbach star missing three league games since the start of last season, one of which with illness. 
With Burnley 18th and set for a long season, we doubt Teller is regretting his decision to join Leverkusen, but there can be little doubt that he'd hope for significantly more opportunities as the season progresses. 2. Yuri Tielemans It is testament to the extraordinary rise of Aston Villa under Unai Emery that Yuri Tielemans has found himself sidelined. His decision to join Villa was considered a huge coup for the Birmingham outfit, with a host of huge clubs linked with Tielemans' signature. Yet, it is the Belgian who needs to prove he deserves minutes on the pitch, not the other way round. Villa are currently fifth in the Premier League within touching distance of the top of the table. They have won 11 games at home on the bounce and boast the second most potent attack after Newcastle. And key to their success has been the excellent midfield partnership of Douglas Louise and Boubacar Camara. The two work perfectly together, Camara crunching the opposition with nearly three tackles per 90, while Louise is the highest scoring midfielder in the league with five. Both Camara and Louise are excellent at progressing the ball too, either by dribbling or passing, which has helped unleash Villa's prolific forward line. As a result, it's Tielemans who are scrapping for chances. On a reported £150,000 per week, he is the club's top earner, yet for minutes he is down at 14th, with the former Leicester star yet to start a single game in the league. In cup competitions, he has featured more prominently, but with just a single assist to his name all season, it seems unlikely that Emery will upset his full-flowing villains to give Tielemans more chances. Such as his predicament, it was reported that the former Monaco man has fallen out with Emery. Tielemans was quick to silence these rumours in a recent interview with the Times, adding he was up for the challenge of battling for his place. But if his absence from the starting eleven continues for much longer, his relationship with his coach will only continue to draw scrutiny. After all, Tielemans is a Belgian international flush with top-level experience and an FA Cup winner's medal. Now 26, no one expected him to be a bench option at a club outside the traditional big six in England. That said, it's firmly on the midfielder to turn his current misfortunes around. 1. Fabio Carvalho Fabio Carvalho will be the first to admit his move to Liverpool from Fulham has been far from ideal so far. Two goals in just under 400 minutes last season did demonstrate why the Reds had moved for the Fulham playmaker, but with Klopp's spot for choice going forward, it was clear Carvalho needed a loan away to keep his career moving forward. RB Leipzig was a tantalising choice by the 21-year-old. Under the guidance of Marco Rosa, the German giants play explosive, direct football, and Carvalho would be rubbing shoulders with a host of exciting talent. What's more, with Dominic Zabosla and Christopher Nkunku leaving for England, it seemed Carvalho was set for plenty of chances at the Red Bull Arena, both domestically and in the Champions League. However, Leipzig's business after his loan was announced has blindsided the former Ballam FC star. Lois Appender and Xavi Simmons joined the club a month after Carvalho, and the pair have jumped straight ahead of him in the pecking order. Simmons in particular has kept Carvalho firmly out of the side. Three goals and four assists doesn't paint the full picture of the PSG Loney this season, who ranks among the most creative players in Europe for dribbles and chances created, all from a similar position that Carvalho was expected to adopt. It means the Liverpool man has played under 120 minutes this term, and is without a goal involvement in six appearances. His sole start against Borussia Mönchengladbach offered little to suggest he would be earning more opportunities too, only managing a single shot in 70 minutes, not creating a single chance, and even touching the ball less than Gladbach's keeper. Carvalho's problem is that the race for the Bundesliga title is closer than ever. Leipzig are firmly in the running, meaning Rosa may not afford any fringe stars a chance to impress. Just ask Timo Werner, who has found himself benched amid the competition. Still, a new experience at a foreign club and under a new coach could still pay dividends for Carvalho in the long run. He will just need to maximise his time at Leipzig, even if those moments aren't always coming on the pitch. So guys, that was five new signings that can't get a game, but I'm sure we left out numerous other players. Let me know who in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to Football Daily for more great daily content, and I'll catch you next time.